Soviets were so satisfied with the results of their Sputnik program that in 1962 they launched a top secret project to develop a self sufficient moon base. The plan was codenamed Zvezda, or Star, and its objective was to take over the moon before the Americans. The objective was overly ambitious and called for the establishment of several habitation modules that would be half buried with regolith to conceal them. They would also be equipped with a wheeled chassis to reposition the base. Zvezda's development looked promising until disaster struck the N1 Human Lunar Expedition Program. The powerful rocket that would carry the facility's components to the moon began suffering a series of crucial setbacks, and it looked like there was no other vehicle on the market that could be up to the task. That is, until a prominent engineer and designer came up with a potential solution. After the Berlin airlift of 1948, it became clear to the Westerners, especially the United States, that there were insoluble differences between them and Stalin's ideas of a new world order. In the years following the rise of the Soviet Union and the Cold War, Americans and Russians clashed in the arms and space race as both nations sought to conquer the moon and outer space. On par with the nuclear weapons development, American and Soviet engineers commenced the development of ambitious plans to put a man on the moon. And while the Americans maintained nuclear supremacy, the Soviet space program rapidly gained the upper edge. During President Dwight D. Eisenhower's administration, the Soviets launched Sputnik 1 in October of 1957, becoming the first vehicle to be launched into space and the first to be put into orbit. American morale suffered a huge blow, and Eisenhower took the matter seriously. In 1958, the President dissolved the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA, which had been tasked with aeronautical research for the past decades, and created NASA. The National Aeronautics and Space Act began to focus on the space race from that point onwards. During this time, Werner von Braun, the German developer of the V-2 rocket, became a pillar of the U.S. space program. And one year after NASA's establishment, his group began to draft the first pages of a lunar military outpost for the U.S. Army, codenamed Project Horizon. The moon outpost was expected to cost $6 billion and become operational by 1986. Twelve soldiers were expected to monitor the moon and the Earth from the outpost, which would also deter Soviet interest in the lunar surface. The Saturn I and Saturn II rockets, still under development, were expected to resupply the base, and it was estimated that Horizon would require over 250 tons worth of construction materials. The project was developed in extreme secrecy, and very few people knew about the fundamental objective of landing on the moon. When John F. Kennedy assumed the presidency in 1961, he awarded more funds to NASA to develop new assets for the space race. The president publicly claimed that his administration was committed to landing a man on the moon within the decade, which was the Apollo program's objective. However, the Soviet space program shared the same objective, which was the nature of the Soviet crewed lunar programs like the Soyuz or Zon spacecraft missions launched with the Proton-K rocket. Like the Americans, the Soviets also believed it was feasible to establish a lunar base. And as far back as 1957, Russian professors from the Soviet Academy of Sciences had expressed that a moon base could be a reality sooner or later. In the early 1960s, following cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin's success aboard Vostok 1, Sergei Korolev, the brilliant mind behind the entire Soviet space program, took on the project to potentially raise an outpost on the moon's surface. Karlov discussed the idea with several scholars and specialists in 1962, and even published an article in Pradva, the primary publication of the Communist Party. However, the matter took a serious tone until 1967, when the Soviets were working on the powerful N-1 rocket, and thanks to Karlov's suggestions, the K-Bomb Design Bureau began gathering information to establish a lunar base. The Bureau first contacted biologists, doctors, architects, astronomers, and atomic experts to study the project's feasibility. Then, in 1969, K-Bomb issued a report titled Principles of the Construction of Long-Functioning Lunar Settlements, which proposed building a lunar base in three phases. The base would only be habitable for a crew of four at first, but would increase to 12 when the last section of the settlement was built. It would have a common area, an astronomy lab, a power supply center, a vehicle depot, and auxiliary facilities, and would also include life support, power, 
thermal control, communication systems, a gym, and a kitchen. The facilities would be buried under layers of regolith to conceal and protect them from meteorites and radiation, and its total mass was estimated at 52,000 kilograms, which would be delivered through the M1 rocket. In 1970, KBOM began building a full-scale mock-up of one of the lunar modules to test different technologies and assets for the project. Unfortunately, things didn't go as expected with the powerful N1 rocket that would carry all the materials required to build the Soviet moon base. After several launch attempts, the N1 project was suspended in 1974 while its engineers figured out what had gone wrong, and the KBOM Bureau was forced to stop the lunar base program until the N1 delivered results. Still, not all hope was lost for the desired Soviet moon base. Following the suspension of the N1 program, the government appointed Valentin Glushko as the head of Energia, the leading manufacturer and developer of Soviet spacecraft. Although Glushko vehemently wished to terminate the N1 rocket, he was pleased to continue with the creation of a lunar settlement. In 1974, Energia released a proposal for its own lunar base that was codenamed Zvezda, or Star, and that would be delivered to the moon aboard the new Vulcan heavy lift rocket. This rocket could deliver 230 tons to low Earth, 60 tons to the moon's orbit, and 22 tons to the lunar surface, while the payload would consist of the LEK, or Lunar Expeditionary Complex, and a lunar transport craft. The LEK spacecraft consisted of the landing stage for the moon's descent, the ascent stage for taking off from the lunar surface, and the re-entry stage for returning to Earth. It weighed 31 tons and comprised a 20-ton laboratory and habitation module of 160 cubic meters, of which 25 square meters were reserved for habitation and 25 for laboratory usage. The module was 9 meters tall and had a width of a little more than 8 meters. It was powered by a solar panel unit that could generate electricity. The third complex was a 15-ton laboratory and production module that stood 5 meters tall and gave access to a biotechnology and physics laboratory with a 3-ton oxygen-generating facility. The entire Soviet moon base complex would be powered by a nuclear power unit. A Lunokhod lunar rover was the last asset of the Zvezda moon base. The 8-ton vehicle with the capacity for two would have a speed of 5 kilometers per hour and an approximate range of 200 kilometers. Before the deployment of the base, the desired zone would be meticulously mapped by an unmanned lunar spacecraft. Afterward, the base would begin construction in three phases, of which the first two would require five Vulcan rocket launches to carry all the equipment and essential materials. The last phase would take place two months after phase two and carry the remaining laboratory equipment. Unfortunately, Glushko's ambitious proposal did not convince the Soviet government. After noticing that the Americans did not establish any moon bases during its seven lunar Apollo expeditions, the government rejected the local project. Instead, the Soviets put their focus on copying the footprints of the American space shuttle. The project was also abandoned because it would cost at least 80 billion US dollars in 1980s currency. However, the Russians' ambition to establish a moon base did not entirely go away. And in the late 2010s, Russia's Federal Space Agency began gathering information to consider building a future base on the moon.